Hey, Adam Flowers here. It is March 30th, Redness Day. And I tell you, we've never done this before. This is going to be different. Uh, I was talking with Red Wimette and said, Red, what are we going to do this Wednesday? And Red's always coming up with great ideas. Always. I mean, Red suggested John Drummond. Red suggested, um, oh, maybe that was a bad suggestion. Never mind, that one. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> Red comes up with great ideas. And he said to me, how about let's have Anthony Demartini on? Now, some of you guys have heard who Anthony Demartini is. Uh, he has a channel on YouTube. It's called Street Stories. I said, well, why not have another YouTuber on? And uh, so that's what we're going to do today. And Anthony's got one hell of a background. Really cool stories. Not only is he a good video producer, and uh, uh, he is also a uh, hell, hell of a guy. So welcome back, guys. My vlog. Red Wimet. Greetings. Wow. Lead up. <laughs> Anthony Martini. I am. <laughs> All right. Awesome, guys. It is good to have both of you here today. And uh, today's going to be a little different if you guys, uh, we're going to talk Chicago outfit. We're going to talk with the guy right down here who actually waited on these guys. So you're going to hear about uh, uh, Jackie Cerrone, <laughs> Joey Ayupa, Tony Spilatro, but from a different point of view, from somewhere that you would see a different angle of them. So, Anthony, with that said, I, I hope that I didn't build you up too much here. Uh, well, where you? This, this might be this might be one of Red's mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Red's never made a mistake, you know. Come on, yeah. well, we'll find out, won't we? I, guess I thought I made a mistake once, and I was mistaken. <laughs> Red was wrong once. Oh no, he didn't make that mistake. You're right. <laughs> so, Anthony, where are you from originally? I am from Chicago. It's a nice little village on the uh, shores of Lake Michigan. Yes, I'm. I'm very familiar with that little place. And um, and and just how did you? Who was the first guy you met? Tell us a little bit about you and about what you've done. Well, I was primarily in the restaurant business. My dad had a club on Rush Street way back when, and uh, I got into it because. I didn't have an education and it was a good way to make a decent living if you didn't have an education. So I uh, got into it and I worked in various places along Rush Street and in the Gold Coast area generally. And then, of course, everybody decided that Vegas was the thing and, you know, the, the streets were all paved in gold. So we went out there and then came back and went out there, depending upon what was going on. So kind of like a migrant worker, except in restaurants. So back and forth, in and out of different yeah, mobbed know. up joints, right? Yeah. Well, not only mobbed up. No, I mean, I, I worked at Shea Paul, which is where the Blues Brothers ate in the movie, if you remember. Uh, they didn't really film it there, although they did spin a car around out in front once or twice. But uh, uh, places like that. And then, you know, various places in Chicago and along Rush Street. And then, you know, I, I was lured out to Vegas. And I worked at, well, the first job I had in Vegas was at Circus Circus and the buffet. So you can just imagine. Uh that that was a cattle feed and then uh because it's union so you have to work your way up i had a a card from chicago h-e-r-e -E, local one which was the hanley's uh they were controlled the restaurant union so i had a traveling card but it still didn't put me high enough up on the ladder to to get a really good gig in vegas until you'd been there a while and worked your way and then i ended up at bally's which uh was the old mgm and i was in seasons which is was the premier room it was like gigi was the premier room so well, that's pretty interesting. I'm going to get into that and ask you a little bit more about that, but I want to say hello to everybody, um, as we normally do in the beginning of the show. Uh, so Scott H., Derek Thompson, William Kirchmayer, uh, G-Money, Luminous Grin, John Calgiros, Alonzo Cushing, uh, Slicker Sam's Melrose Park was great. Alonzo, that's what I heard. I never went to Slicker Sam's, but I'm sure Anthony did, yeah? I have a book of matches from there, yeah. You got a book of matches for me. Anthony has a hell of a collection too, by the way, guys. <laughs> go look in the description below. Go to Anthony's channel and go check out his videos. Be sure to subscribe to it while you're there too. Uh, Leanne Definitely. rolling around along Don Chichio Di Porzalo. He's saying happy birthday to me in Sicilian. In Sicilian, guys. I never had anybody sing happy birthday to me in Sicilian. It's unbelievable. Uh, Don Chichio, he's my uh, Italian teacher, my, my tutor. 
And uh, Larry Lapper, I know you think that the over-under on the butcher today is uh, about a seven, but <laughs> but uh, uh, but with Don Ciccio Di Porzalo's help, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be getting along a little bit better, you know. So that's how that goes. Uh, Tommy Bridges, yeah, over-under is seven. See, he'll take the over. Good. Cody Stelly. Uh, Tim Halverson, Tedford Von Patriot. He's a member of the channel. So is Greg Polly. Thanks for uh, coming on the tour, as well as Dave Pritchard. He's a member of the channel as well. And uh, G Money is a member of the channel. G Money, thanks for the birthday wish the other day too, buddy. Uh, Gabby Rodriguez, Greg Hart. Uh, is that a picture of Frank Collada over your right shoulder there, Anthony? He wants there to know. He is. That's, that's Frank right there. That's yeah. Frank. Signed with the uh, PSA symbol and make sure it was legit. When did you meet Frank Collada? I didn't. I bought oh, it. Yeah, you I bought, bought it online. Okay. Yeah. Um, Filippo Corti, Keith Helton, Michael Graham. Hit the like button, guys. Please hit the like button. Trail Dusty. Good uh, to see all of you guys here today. And uh, so, and Catherine Guerrero, I didn't skip you. I really didn't. You and James, I'd never skip over you guys. Um, I just started in the middle of the list and worked my way down. So I didn't go all the way back to the beginning because I'm sure I missed a few others like Jim Yeager. Um, Street Stories. Oh, you're here. Oh, my I God. Am. I think. <laughs> uh, Sean Pender. Good to see you guys. And uh, uh, Robert Banker. Uh, I wasn't whacked. I'm here. I, was, I wasn't late either. See? So anyway, Anthony. So, um, so. So you met some of the bosses of the Chicago outfit. Can you tell yeah, us a little times. bit about that and what they were like? The one I waited on the most, the ones I waited on the most had to have been Jackie Cerrone and uh, Tony Spilatro. Um, I had one encounter with uh, Joey Iupa. Uh, <laughs> I talked about it. I, you know, like I said, we were migrant workers in the restaurant business and so I got the brilliant idea to go work in Rochester, Minnesota, of all places, at the uh, Taylor Hotel, which was about the only hotel there at the time. It was a fine dining restaurant called the Elizabethan Room, and uh, Mr. Ayupa was in prison, quote unquote. <laughs> but he came to the Elizabethan Room to eat, and who would get the lucky straw? Me. I got him, and he. I went up to the table, and he uh, said, "Young man, I'd like a Bloody Mary." And when he said that, his wife next to him exploded. And, you know, a string of curse words. I mean, she was mad. You're not having one of them. Blah, 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 blah. So <laughs> I, I said, I'll give you a little time. I walked away. Uh, there was a guy with them. I don't know who it was. Uh, he had curly brown hair, glasses. Some people may know who he was. He was like their assistant. He took the, the lady, the wife, out somewhere. And then he motioned me back over <laughs> to get his Bloody Mary. So I foisted him off on another waiter who I didn't particularly care for because I wasn't about to get in the middle of that. I didn't know who he was at the, at the very beginning. It just looked like a, you know, cherub-faced old man. But when I got real close, he has a very distinctive nose. And I said, I know exactly who this guy is. And I, so I bailed out. But that was my only encounter with him. And I never, I never met uh, Tony Arcardo or saw him on the street or anything like that either. So the two I weighed on most, Jackie Cerrone and Tony Spilacro. So what was, what was Tony like? Was he a big tipper? Tony was a great tipper and he was a very nice guy. And, 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 you know, it's funny. I, sometimes I think back to those, con, you know, the, not, not conversations with me cause I'm nobody. I was just a waiter, but he would be talking and I could, I could tell he was, he was like a, a nice guy that ended up in a mobster's body. If that makes any sense. You know what I mean? He, broken, wasn't he? Huh? The soft spoke. Wasn't he? I didn't know he was. In the, I mean, he was just a guy. You know, he was he was you know cajoling with people at the table and laughing and making jokes. He was just a nice guy, and you wonder, you know, because we I I knew who he was, and uh, you just uh, you know you think, man, it's so strange that he can he can turn and and do some of the things that you you hear about. But I guess you know. I understand just, completely. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I don't know how to explain it. I just Like I said, it, he seemed like a nice guy that got trapped in a mobster's body somehow. So we, I've never heard anybody describe a mobster that way. That, But but there is a dichotomy because it's like two people, right? Well, yeah, one, he was just, uh, you know, I, he was talking to one, one time he was talking to somebody and he was about loaning somebody money. And, you know, the guy was just a, 
I don't know, some kind of pain in this in, in, in his rear end. And, you know, I mean, you would think he'd get all hot and bothered, but instead now he's like, oh, I got to help the guy. I remember that distinctly. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, this doesn't sound like a guy who can do the things that he says he does, you know, that they say he does, but I guess, you know. Yeah. He was an easygoing man. He was a very easygoing guy. Yeah, I me. never had a, you know, I, I often say Jack Cerrone was mean. But he wasn't mean to me. I mean, he wasn't like, you know, giving me a hard time or anything like that. He just wasn't like they were. He wasn't as cordial and friendly and warm. You could tell this guy meant business. You know, when he just, when he walked in the door with his little entourage of people, there'd be like a pall would come over the place. I would, I was like, oh, you know, it's going to be one of those nights because they stayed for a long time. So I knew I was going to be with him for at least four or five hours. And he was just, I, he just, he was, I was uneasy around him. I, that's all I could say. I, not that he was mean or, and he was just, you could, he was intense. I never saw the guy smiling. Never saw him smile. I never saw him oh. smile until I saw some of those pictures of him smiling, but I never saw him smile. Who was that now? Jack Cerrone. Okay. Yeah. Cerrone, me, so he always, he, he, I, he, like a, like a psychotic Don Rickles. That's what he reminded me of. He was like, he had a, a friendly face, but just so intense and you know just weird very matter of fact kind of personality very curt yeah i mean i would ask him was everything good everything was fine that would be his you know no smile on everything was fine and then good night and go away that. go away <laughs> yep, okay. good night so. wow so some people when you go up to the table and you serve them and, and i i i i'm right there with you that's you know i i Grew up in, in Chicago and, well, what do I do? I didn't go to college. So right. uh, magician, there you go. Clown, <laughs> mom, dad, let me run off to the circus. Okay. <laughs> no, I ended up behind a lot of bars, bartending, and I ended up right. serving food. I ended up waiting on people. Some people, when you go up and you fill up their water, you bring them another uh, uh, a drink. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're right. And then other people are, you know, here's your water, mm -hmm. you know. If they There's even no, acknowledge you, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, mm -hmm. so was Tony? Tony would acknowledge you when you'd go. Was he a Tony? He, he to me was. It, it would. It. I wouldn't be shocked if he invited me to sit down at the table with him. That was the kind of guy that he was. He was cordial and warm and things. Whereas Mr. Cerrone, no way. I mean, Mr. You know that guy. No, no way. He would be <laughs> one of those kind of people that you didn't exist in his mind. Yeah, and you would wow. have sat down if he would have invited you. <laughs> yeah, I, well, that's the other thing too. Unfortunately, I don't have a personal rapport with a lot of these people because even the people behind me, even though all these are autographed, it's not like and and Adam can attest to this in Vegas. Hounding someone for their autograph while you're waiting on them is you know, the quickest way out the door. I mean, yep. you'll be so. You know, unfortunately, I never had the opportunity. You know, I mean, you could take what they call in Vegas, where they used to. I don't know if they do any more tokes. You know, tips. They call mm -hmm. them tokes and tokes. comps. Yeah, like tokes the guy. Yeah, uh, from these guys. But you know, don't you dare ask them for. You know, I mean, even if they said it was okay, if your boss saw you, that would be it for you. So, uh, I waited on a lot of the stars that you see behind me uh, in Vegas, but I never. You know, you, you have to be friendly but not familiar. That's it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, exactly. And even, uh, doing, you know, what I did, uh, uh entertaining and celebrity parties and all mm -hmm. nowadays, and right, everybody's got their camera, everybody's got their camera and you well, stand there and you go, Hey, and try yeah. to get back. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. This no. was before that. And actually I find that surprising. And if you look online and you look like, say you wanted to find a picture of the inside of any casino, you, you choose it, the dunes, the whatever it's hard to find because they were, if they saw you walking in with a camera, you, they'd stop you at the door. This was before yeah. cell phones and stuff. You weren't allowed to take pictures and stuff like that. There's very few exist because of that. I've I've tried to find photos of the front of the landmark they used as a Art. filming for, for casino and all. I can't find pictures of the of the even the valet area. No, yeah, you're not I, allowed. I mean, I they they don't they didn't like that. They didn't want any pictures taken of anything that they thought might be proprietary or whatever. You could, and you know, cameras were bigger back in the day. It was a production yeah. to come out with a camera and start. You know, even in the '90s, people that was you couldn't carry it in your pocket. You know, right? It was too so, big. 
that's why and, and that's you know that precluded people from you know nowadays yeah with the selfie thing you'd, you'd be hounding them but I, i'm yeah. sure they still have that rule where hey you you can't be hounding these people no they don't they don't want that at all so 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 um how was how was uh, jackie Cerrone as a tipper uh well here's the other thing too now as you get into that higher echelon of people their people are the ones that take care of the tab and so generally speaking they didn't give a rat's rear end whether they gave a good tip or not so they probably you know it wasn't that great on the other hand tony spilatros was always good his brother michael not so much now what was michael like uh, uh not nearly as friendly as tony <laughs> really yeah, I waited on him alone. Well, not alone, but with people I, I had no idea who it was. And I waited on him once with that uh, knock the battery off my shoulder guy, that Robert Conrad. I guess they were friends. Very and close. Either one of them were very friendly. And, uh, you know, the tip didn't stand out. The biggest tip was from Joey Lombardo. And my boss came to me and said, hey, this guy, we were closed. I mean, you know, it's like 10 o'clock. The dining room closed at 10. That was it. It's like 10, 10, 10, 10, 15 doing all the side work, which you know of, if you're a bartender, they got the most side work of anybody. Yeah. And uh, my boss came and said, hey, can you take care of this guy? I'll put him in a booth over here. He just lost a hundred grand at the tables. I don't care, you know, money's money. I, you know, I'm not going anywhere. So I, it was him and uh, he, uh, all he wanted was a cup of coffee and some apple pie, a piece of pie. I didn't even know what it was. I said, well, we have apple, we have, so he chose apple and then, uh, I said, can I make you a fresh pot? Because, you know, the pot that we have now has been sitting here all night. It's going to taste like, you know, just give me a few minutes. I'll, oh, okay, okay. I'm very nice, very cordial. When he left, he gave me 100 bucks. So he was nice. there probably was 20 Joey. minutes. That yeah. was Joey. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. He was so grateful that I would think to make him a, a fresh pot of coffee, you know. What restaurant was that? That was in uh, at Bally's. It was at Bally's. Yeah. So Joe Lombardo came out here in Vegas and was. Yeah, he must have been out there for something. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I didn't know who he was originally because I'd waited on him in Chicago too. But, you know, he was one of those kind of guys that sometimes he had a mustache, sometimes he had a goatee, sometimes he had a beard, sometimes you could never tell. I mean, the guy was like different all the time. And so when I, I first I ah, maybe I know, but nah, nah, oh, now nah, I know who it is. You know what I mean? Right. The, the way he smiled gives it away, no matter what. He yeah, he has kind of a funny smile. Pinkish smile, yeah, like a yeah, 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 yeah. kind of <laughs> weird kind of <laughs> weird. But watch that Woolworths video when he walks through Woolworths and he's standing. Yeah, like, you can kind of see it. It's, it's very it's distinctive, weird. and his nose. Is, all those guys were boxers back in the day, so like Ayupa had that smash nose, and well, now it was. Uh, it was Iupa's nose was, he wasn't just born that way. That was no, it, it looked punch. smashed. When you got up close to him, you could tell it was, the bridge was broken. And it was like hanging over his nose. It looked like a can opener. <laughs> <laughs> like Grandpa from the Munster. Oh, my it God. It's like like that. Do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He'd probably do it, too. That guy was. Oh, that's too funny. Pew Pew Guru, thank you very much for the uh, super sticker. That's nice. Scott H., a job that leaves you with good memories and stories is worthwhile regardless of the money. There yeah. you go, Scott. A, a life that leaves you with good memories and stories right. is worthwhile, right? That's right. That's right. And the money wasn't bad. And, you know, that's the, the thing about Vegas, at least back then. We're talking 30 years ago. But, you know, you were in Chicago, a waiter was paid like a a dollar ten an hour because they <laughs> expected you to have all your tips and that just paid your taxes. Whereas in Vegas, I think I, it was like six or seven bucks an hour. It's a big difference. Sure, sure. And and you know, that's back in the eighties. You know, a hundred dollars yeah. was. You know, yeah, I don't know what it is now, but back then it was. Yeah, today a hundred dollars like ten dollars back then. You know, yeah. I mean, it, oh yeah. It, yeah, it's, but it's then, uh, when the when the outfit ran Vegas, the employees were taken care of so well that they took care of the customers even better because they didn't want that kind of thing to end. And that's really should be the pro forma for every business. The better you take care of your employees, the better they're going to take care of your customers, the more successful everybody's going to be. But unfortunately, people that buy stocks in these companies don't see it that way. They just want their dividend and they could care less how it comes. And so that's the difference. We they, they, we had our own employee dining room. You'd swipe in. You could eat all day. I, I think I gained 100 pounds working there. 
you could eat five meals a day there if you wanted to. You know, it was good yeah. food. Yeah. Every every hotel I worked at had that. So. Thanks, Ken O'Connell. Now I can go to the EDR. <laughs> <laughs> no, they they have big EDRs. When we were performing at um, the MGM for Beecher's Madhouse, we got to use the EDR down there. The mm-hmm. EDR was just as exp- I mean, it was better than the buffet oh, yeah. upstairs. You know, yeah, they had. Right. Some, actually, sometimes the food in the employee r- dining room was better than what they were serving the customers. That's certainly true of Circus Circus. We were getting steaks and stuff out of the steakhouse there, you know, a little piece of steak that you wouldn't get in the buffet. That buffet yeah. was just, I mean, I think they tore it down now or they made it a food court or something. But that buffet, you know, I got stuck on the breakfast shift. I couldn't let go of the steering wheel on my car for all the orange juice. Fresh squeezed orange juice was the big thing. And you would be just covered in this glop. In a purple tuxedo. <laughs> so I come home at like three o'clock. You know, you have to pry your fingers off the steering wheel from all the orange juice. What a nightmare that was. Yeah, no, I, a, a circus circus buffet was voted worst buffet five years in a row out here. It's well, not I a think, buffet; it's a feeding trough. Okay, the I macaroni think, and cheese is in with yeah, the potatoes, yeah, and, it was and just, the potatoes are in with the green beans and it. Oh my god! Yeah, when I started, it was there. breakfast for ninety nine cents, lunch was two dollars, and dinner was three ninety nine or something like or two ninety nine. But it was just pure. I, they would just come in in a wave, and and just it was it was nuts. I was so glad to get out of there. You just don't know, Mo. Oh, uh, hi, Red. I hope you're well. I came down with COVID. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to in next Wednesday. Please, God, I'll be watching from a beach in Malaga. It's Malaga. <laughs> okay, Mo. I'm, I'm, I hope you get well soon. Praying for you, Mo. Speedy recovery, buddy. Um, so, so Back to Michael Spilatro. Mm -hmm. Michael Spilatro wasn't part of the reason that they got rid of him because of how arrogant he was. Uh, That's what I've heard, but I mean, I you know, I mean, he he was arrogant, is what you're is what you said, right? I don't know. He was arrogant so much, you know, for whatever reason. And don't take this the wrong way. You probably can attest to this. I'm six foot three and almost three hundred pounds, and I always have been muscular. Very few people get arrogant Mm -hmm. with me. (laughs) <laughs> you know, regardless. So I don't, I wouldn't say arrogant, but he was just standoffish, not like his brother. His brother was really nice. And, you know, quarter whereas he was just not, not mean, but just again, like Jackie Strong, he just didn't want any part of anyone except his little group. That was it. When you worked at Circus Circus, did Tony Spilatro still have Anthony Stewart's limited there? I, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I was in the eighties, so it, it's very possible. No. No, no. Seven, yeah, he got here in 71. I think oh. he was out of there, Luminous Grin, by like 75. Oh, no, no. I that, yeah, he and then he went and started the Gold Rush Jewelry Store. Yeah, so. no, then he was gone because I think I started at Circus Circus in 83, 82 or 83, something like that. Everybody hit the like button, please, if you're just coming in. Anthony Demartini with us uh, from Street Stories. He has his own YouTube channel. Uh, check it out in the description down below. And um, Mo, Spain, that's where you're going to be watching us from next week. Spain, take us with. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. That's awesome. Um, so so uh, is Warren Martini any relation, Anthony? No. William Kirchmayers. No. No. I wish he was. I wish our wallets were related. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's, re- he's related somehow, or some one of the guys in that band was related to Milton Berle. I do remember that. Oh yeah, Milton Berle. Yeah, one of those guys in that band, Rat, was related. Was the was the grandson of Milton Berle? Robert Balk is asking uh, Anthony, do you know Irv Khan or Jim Ward? The Shegets? No. Shegets? No. No, it doesn't ring a bell. Ward's last name rings a bell, but I think that guy's name was Tom Ward. He was a union rep, a BA. So, um, so what other guys? Joey Lombardo, Tony Spilatro, Iupa, any other? Uh, Jackie Cerrone. Who else did you run into in your days? Uh, well, I'm sure I ran into all of them. I just didn't encounter them or know who they were. Remember, I'm from the north side. My dad's family was from the neighborhood. 
And so he grew up around all those guys. My cousin, who will remain unnamed, uh, his father, or cousins by marriage, so not by blood, but his father was uh, Angela LaPietra, the Hooks um, partner. And so, I mean, I knew those guys when we'd go into that neighborhood in Bridgeport for, for holidays and stuff, but I didn't didn't know them, you know what I mean? I, I probably didn't want to. That I do know that that Angela LaPietra was a sight for to behold, he, he that guy you knew looked like a killer. There was no doubt about it. His brother huh. Jimmy too was uh, huh, pretty wild. Actually, there's a story in the neighborhood that people would cross the street they didn't want to go on the sidewalk in front of their house. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how's that for an admonition? I, you know, you're so you're so notoriously mean that even the kids in the neighborhood cross the street rather than pass in front of your house. So. Hey, there's David Bowman. I see that. Hey, Anthony yeah. and Red. I decided to drop in. Hey, David Bowman. How's it going? Good to see How you. How you doing, guys? Thanks for stopping you. in, David. Um, oh, yeah. How about, how about yeah, Scott H. Good question. So let's hear about some celebrities. You had to have waited on some celebrities. Biggest well, as you know, Adam, anyone that headlined at Bally, so Tom Jones, of course, Engelbert Humperdinck, all of those kinds of guys. Um, Tom Jones was nice. You know, I never knew that those guys, I didn't know that either one of them were, were English until I waited on them and they talked with an accent and, you know, you kind of get taken aback, but really nice. Tom Jones especially was very nice. Um, good tipper, even though they're allowed to put all their stuff on their room or whatever their deal is, he would always leave a little extra on the table. That's, that's, uh, that's nice. Yeah, and then there was others like Don Rickles who, you know, wasn't very different from what you saw on, on television. I yeah. Mean, he was always cracking, cracking jokes and stuff. And then I waited on, um, there's a comedian named Red, Tommy Dream. Red's laughing about that Don Rickles. You hear what He's happened like to Red that, Don like, Rickles, right? Yeah, it wasn't a stretch for him. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of those Don must have something to wait on. Don must have something on. Huh? Okay. Don must have been something to wait on because so he's just you know he's a a ball buster. That's what he. That was how you he got, got it, off. Man. You know, <laughs> he'd go around the room insulting people, and then you know, sure. There was a guy in Chicago. I'm not going to mention his name either, but he was a big real estate magnate, and I guess he was some type of soccer star way back when. And he used to come into every restaurant in Rush Creek, just make the rounds, and he would sit down at the bar, and nobody knew who this guy was. And he would sit at the bar. You picture a nice U-shaped bar, maybe 20, 30 people sitting. And he'd look over at somebody and, and, and call him a disparaging name. And the whole bar would, you know, erupt in a, in a fervor. And then he'd buy everyone a drink, get everyone calmed down. And as soon as he got them calmed down, he'd do it again. <laughs> and this is how this guy got off. And then, and then so we used to warn each other. We'd call each other down the bar. Hey, he's coming towards you. You better get ready. Because, you know, he couldn't throw the guy out. He dropped two, three hundred dollars. But... This is the kind, and, and Rickles was like, they like to break people, including me. I'm sure he said something. I, I know I was, you know, laughing and stuff like, <laughs> stuff like that. I but, can only imagine waiting on him. <laughs> it was nice. His wife was a sweet, sweet woman. I think her name was Barbara. She was sweet. But uh, there was a guy, Tommy Dreesen. I don't know if you know who he is. He's a Chicago guy, comedian. They, him and Joe Pesci. We're doing some kind of golf tournament or golf uh, charity. And right before I left Vegas for like the 25th time, I waited on those two. And it was nice and everything was cordial. That was it. A week or two later, I'd already was back in Chicago. I was at a, at a club down there that a friend of mine had built. And here they came, the same pair. And I said, I just waited on you at Bally's. Yeah, you were a crazy little motherfucker. You went into his routine, you know. This. And the guy's only like five foot three. I mean, he's, he's a really small guy, but he was he was entertaining and a good tipper. And Tom Dreesen was a nice guy. So. Well, how about musicians? Outfit boss wants to know. Did you wait on any musicians uh, besides Tom well, Jones? Yeah, from Chicago. Yeah, of course. Uh, Did you meet Liberace? Matthew Pumpkins. Um, I wait on those guys. Guns and Roses. Uh, just about all the Bulls from when the Bulls had an actual team. Um, Michael Jordan, good tipper, yeah. bad tipper. I've heard he's a terrible uh, tipper. Well, um, oh. 
It's not that he's a bad tipper, but him and his wife, Juanita, I think was her name, <laughs> would come in on a Friday night. I had to close my entire section. We had these curtains. And they would sit there for hours with their little, you know. So you'd make, I would make, you know, 50 bucks on this guy when I could have made three or $400 that night. So he wasn't, you know, that yeah. was kind of, the, yeah, it wasn't that he was a bad tipper. It's just that, you know, I had to shut down my entire station because he needed, you know, to be private. So but there is one of them that was it, uh, no tipping rhymes with, with, with his name. So <laughs> I, I can't say the tipping probably rhymes with, yeah, I got it. Good old Scotty. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. And by the way, guys, Don Rickles is uh, sadly passed away yeah. a couple of years ago. But if you're in Las Vegas and you want that kind of experience like Don Rickles, go down to the Four Queens and buy yourself some tickets and go see Mike Hammer. Okay. Mike Hammer is the Don Rickles of magic this guy is great magician funny guy ball buster and he's only like he's only like four foot nine <laughs> i hope mike sees this he's like four foot nine it's like this tiny guy but he he just rips the audience it's great he's he's awesome so i just want to throw that little plug in there for him well rickles was funny and and, and he didn't mean anything by it but in this day and age no way no way <laughs> they'd be they'd be they'd shut the cameras off and throw them out so. How about any interesting private parties in Vegas? Didn't do any private parties in Vegas. You could sign up for uh, banquets uh, if you were high enough on the totem pole with the union, but I never got that high. So, gotcha. Unfortunately. Although I, speaking of musicians when, or magicians rather, when I lived in Vegas, you couldn't swing a dead cat without hitting a billboard that said Lance Burton or Melinda, the first lady of Maddie. I mean, they were everywhere, and uh, I, I don't know whatever happened to them, but. I mean, they were everywhere. Melinda ended up cheating on Lance Burton with Rich Little. A Rich Little? Yeah, and then Rich made a sex tape. What? With Melinda. <laughs> oh, yeah, you didn't know about that? No, I did. Rich I made, did. He made a sex tape of him and Melinda. And, yeah, anyway, yeah, Lance and her didn't last so long. <laughs> My God, Rich Little's 106 years old. I've got his autographed picture up here somewhere. I just, I remember the interview, Rich is sitting there going, you think you know somebody, you, 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 you think you know somebody. <laughs> Somehow, so somebody was, yeah, there was a sex tape involved. But anyway, back in those days, there was a magic show in every other casino. I mean, you know, it was like every casino, there was somebody with a tiger in a box putting a girl in, you know. Well, they that those two were very prominent. And of course, Siegfried and Roy were there yes. with their white tigers. Uh, they weren't originally. They, they went over to the to the uh, Mirage. At, they were somewhere else first, and then they went to the Mirage when they built the Mirage. And that was uh, boy, that was a big to do when they built the Mirage. That was like, uh, of course, it killed downtown because everybody wanted to build on the south end of the Strip, and everyone left downtown to poor old Bob Stupak in that crazy tower. Yeah, <laughs> and you remember the, that crazy tower catching on fire? Not once twice oh no i just remember when they were building it and originally he wanted it to be so high and the airport said no and they did the same thing i think uh bellagio originally was supposed to be called beau rivage and it was supposed to be 80 stories high and the airport said you're not building no 80 story building over there so that was the end of that and it, yeah <laughs> i didn't know about that but i did know about the idea the plans to have a gorilla a, a gorilla, mechanical gorilla, was going to climb the side of the stratosphere tower, and it was a ride, and it was going to hold like forty people in the back of the gorilla, and they would climb up the side and then free really? fall, shoot down, you know, shoot, you know, and do this. But the engineers couldn't figure out how to get that to work. I guess. Well, no. Stupak was he was a showman. No, no, no doubt about it. He was a. He looked like he was always sucking on a lemon. I saw him walking by one time in the Riviera. Actually, I was. He was talking with Jackie Mason. And uh, they, he looked like he always had a face that, you know, but good guy, smart guy. So was Steve Wynn. Can't can't knock him. That guy changed the face of Vegas. He sure did. You know, originally downtown Fremont Street, he wanted to put a, a river system yeah. for the gondola rides. Yeah. They were going to have a river up and down Fremont yeah. Street. And then the canopy idea came Well, in that was again. his thing. He was going to build this big Italian, like uh, it's supposed to be like in um, Italy, Venice. 
the Venetian, and he but he wanted the canals to run all through the city, but the city shot that down. They're like, forget it, we have a water problem. Didn't anyone tell you? So, what happened to what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Huh? We're out here letting it all out. All right, here's what happened to what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. The <laughs> other day, I saw on the news that Vegas now has more more cases of syphilis per capita than anywhere else in the country. So what happens in Vegas goes home with you now, requires medication. All right? That's what happened to what happens <laughs> in Vegas. Unbelievable. As if we had, you know, needed another title, you know, entertainment capital, suicide capital. Now we're the syphilis capital. Well, you should do live reports from Vegas. I haven't been back to Vegas since 2011. My dad and mom lived out there. My dad passed away in 2011. We went out to see him one last time. And that was the last time I was there. So it's been 10, 11 years. Uh, but it changed substantially from the 80s. You know, it was a whole different animal. Johnny Russo. Did you ever wait on, on Johnny Russo? No. <laughs> no. He was too busy with Marilyn Monroe, I think. So I. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Good but he wanted to be on Warwick. That that I know is the true. Well, true that's thing. that 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 is true. I think they they did date. I believe. I think I I, I think uh, Mr. Colada said that actually. Yeah, yeah, he did see him with him. Uh, somebody just asked, "Is that a picture of Frank Colada over your right yeah. shoulder?" I mean, you guys are just tuning in. We talked about it already. Yes, that is a picture over uh, Anthony's right shoulder there. You can't see past my block head, but this is a phone from the Riviera, and. That's I don't know what's been going on, but I called room service seven years ago, and I'm still on hold. <laughs> <laughs> didn't Sean Pender, didn't Steve Wynn destroy a very expensive painting because he was blind? Yes, he put his arm through a Picasso. <laughs> he didn't see what he was doing, and I guess he bumped into the thing and he ripped it. Yeah, I, and I'm sure that they had to have it uh, have to have it uh, fixed. So Yeah. But he was a smart guy. Smart. I think they tried to kidnap his daughter, or they did, or something like that once. They did, and then, yeah. they, and then they and he went down to the Mirage. He was at the Mirage at the time. He went to the cage and he said, "Give me one and a half million dollars, whatever it was, the ransom." He took the cash out. They went and they did the the. the here's the money. Give me my daughter. The whole right. And then the idiots went and tried to buy a Ferrari in California <laughs> using cash, and I called the police. They went, "Here's a guy that kidnapped Steve Wynn's daughter. He got all the cash, you know." So. What an idiot. Who does it? You know, when you talk about stupid criminals, that's just stupid. I mean, oh, yeah. stupid. I mean, you know, you don't have to be bright to be a criminal. <laughs> no. Oh, that's true. You don't. Uh, it's the bright ones, though, that get away with it. Yeah, but they're all Wall Street and in Washington, D.C., so, you know. Uh, RV Doc, do you know Man Cow? Eric Muller, yeah. You do? Yeah. yeah. I do. I knew him before he was uh, anything. Yeah. Yeah. I have you a know, friend named Adam. You know him when? <laughs> huh? You knew him when? It's like the old saying, I knew him back when. Oh, way, yeah, way back when. That's right, yeah. He was a, I mean, he's a nice guy, I guess. How come Frank's the only picture that you have behind you that's in color? Some are black and white, some are in color. I have, uh, you can't see them all, obviously, but uh, I have some that are in color, some are just whatever was available that I could that I could afford when I was putting this collection together is what I got. Uh, okay. Michael Graham, let's get something straightened out. Adam, you were a hundred percent positive that Will Smith slapped Kevin Hart when it was actually Chris Rock, Rich Little. <laughs> I know I was off on that. Okay. I said, I was like, no, no, no. I was half asleep when I read it. Okay. So I was off. It was Chris Rock, but Rich Little was a complete different generation than Melinda. I think you have a name mix up again. Nope. I'm a hundred percent positive. It was Rich Little and Melinda. You guys could go check that out somewhere. I know I have I, it on video. I, I recall I she was pretty attractive. I can't imagine she'd see anything in Rich Little, but I'm telling you, it's Rich Little and Melinda had a thing going. You guys know you're gonna bust my balls about this. I know it, and that's well, fine. I, I believe you. I, you know, like I said at the very beginning, the, the higher up the food chain you go, the more debaucherous everything gets. So, <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> uh, what was the best restaurant back in Vegas before you moved in 2011? Well, the I didn't move in 2011. We left Vegas in '95. So. Uh, where I was at at, at Bally's uh, Seasons, which was the premier room in Bally's. 
uh, was was the one of the better rooms. All right, guys, I, I'm 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 gonna I'm going to I'm actually gonna read this off of Rich Little's Wikipedia page. Okay. Hmm. All right. Let me. Linda. So but you gotta read it in the voice of Johnny Carson. <laughs> Did you wait on Johnny Spouse. Carson? No. No. Spouses. Gene Warden from 71 to 89. Jeanette Markey, 94 to 97. Marie Morata. Marota. Sorry, Marie Morota. 03, she died in 10. And then Catherine Brown from 12 to 12. Partners, Melinda Sachs. That's Bonnie Sachs's daughter, Melinda, the first lady of magic, from 1988 to 1991 for three years. The two of them had a thing going. And wow. it says Little was engaged to ma to magician Melinda Sachs, but she broke off the three-year relationship in 91, saying she had discovered he had secretly videotaped them having sex in 1988. Sachs sued Little for defamation, invasion of privacy, and inflicting emotional distress, claiming he had joked about their relationship on stage. Little claimed that the videotaping was consensual. The lawsuit was eventually settled out of court. So there you go, guys. I'm not making it up, all right? Rich Little and Melinda. There you well, go. He, his uh, stock rose a little bit in my eyes. If a guy like that could, you know, she was pretty. So. Yeah. Oh, very, very much. Very much. BSJ, thanks for the super sticker. Appreciate you tuning in today. Uh, guys, if you've been out here in Vegas and you've, uh, you, you, you've come out here, maybe you heard about it, maybe you haven't heard about it, George from Franklin Park was out here recently, and uh, he did the mop tour. All right, hey, welcome back, everybody. Adam Flowers here, mob vlog, and I just got done doing another another mob tour today. This time with George, and George is from Franklin Park. What you think, George? It's great, great, very informative. You come to Vegas, make sure you do this tour. Now, George, you went and saw a show the other night. Who'd you see? Penn and Teller. And was this better than Penn and Teller? Oh, by far, way better. There way you go. Better. And I'm not even doing magic, guys. <laughs> hey, thanks again, man. I appreciate thank, it. Thanks for having us. Have a great day, guys. Prescribe. Prescribe. Prescribe and hit the like button, okay? <laughs> Don't forget to do that. Uh, guys, thanks so much. Uh, maybe Rich Little was emotional distress. Maybe Rich's Little was emotional distress. <laughs> <laughs> Rich's Little... You know, Dick's yeah. little. Never mind. So, He's still around. He's got to be close to ninety. Oh, yeah. I would think so. I would think so. Is he with us? Um, Is he still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. I just thought he's got to be up there. I think he is. Uh, I'm, I'm almost sure that. I mean, on his Wikipedia, he's not dead. So he's but he was born in '38, which would make him 80 to 83. Yeah, so he's up there. Right. He's up there. So yeah. Um, G Money, hey that George guy is me. Hey G Money, that's that's G Money who just he was on the tour. I just played his video. Yeah, thanks for taking the tour again, man. It was awesome. You know who else I had on the tour, and I wanted to play it today, and I I just didn't have time to put it up there. But um, Big Tuna, Big Tuna sent his little sister out here. Big Tuna from the channel, if you're watching, Big Tuna, thanks for sending your sister out here. I mean that in a nice way. She was awesome. She and her husband did the um, the mob tour, and they did a little testimonial afterwards. And they had a little Snapchat to play to me, which I didn't get to record, of Big Tuna. And Big Tuna's on there going, hey, you better give my little sister a good tour. If not, it's the fucking thumbs, all right? It's the hammer thumbs. I love you guys. You're all awesome. You really are. Every one of you. Um, uh, how about New York mobsters? Any... Uh, any any interactions with that? No, know? I I it's funny when I watch these other channels, some of the other ones that you know, talk about mob. I don't know that there was much affiliation at all with the Chicago outfit in New York, other than through the Genovese family, which represented Chicago's interests at the commission. But that was even before my time, I think. Yeah, if you go way back, I mean, yeah. uh, Torio Torio and Capone really founded the outfit, and Capone was from New York. He was from. Right. You know, yeah. so if you say, is there any New York to Chicago connections, man, the very beginning, there sure was, right? Well, so, they're, 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 I, Chicago was seeded by New York in the sense that they sent Torrio and Capone and I, maybe even Ross Prio might have been from 
New York or the East Coast originally, but uh, yeah, but but once in in the at least from my knowledge in the seventies and eighties in Chicago, which was probably the the apex of the outfit's existence, I don't think there was much. Uh, New York certainly wasn't telling Chicago what to do. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. No, and you know everybody. Anytime this is brought up, and we just talked to John Drummond about it too. He he even agreed that. New York couldn't shake a stick at no. Chicago. They were too busy fighting their, their, themselves, whereas Chicago was, what did he call it, Red? Monolithic? Meaning yes, monolithic. All one, mono, monolithic. Under one boss. I, mean, I wrote Chicago's about that in my book, too. I wrote the same thing. I think it's the common consensus of everybody. Chicago's little crews would, would squabble amongst themselves occasionally, but it was nothing like the family wars that were going on in New York and even Philadelphia that, you know, take away a lot of the, the forward momentum for any group uh, when you're trying to gain territory and stuff. If you're fighting amongst yourselves, it's just not going to happen. I, I, I used to hear Chicago's outfit being described as the, the ones who get it right because there was no infighting. There was no, uh, you know, checking with 15 different people to get something done. It was just one and done and boom, and they did their, they took care of their business, so. Yeah, uh, how much truth there is that I don't know because I'm not a mob historian, but just from my own personal understanding, uh, Chicago was a force to deal with. I any New Yorker would disclaim it, but uh, you know if it came down to it, I'm pretty sure Chicago would come out on top in a in a war. Yeah, yeah. Schweiss told um, me that. Schweiss told me that one time. He said, uh, "I said maybe it's one of those guys from New York," and he said, "If New York came in here, they'd get their asses kicked in ten seconds." Well, Chicago had a lot more young uh, gang, uh, young uh, members, whereas New York had a lot of the old mustache peeps and what we used to call zips from Sicily. Uh, so those guys aren't shooters necessarily. You know, you got 86 year olds going to take somebody down with an ice pick. It's just not going to happen. Whereas in Chicago, you had young guys out there doing the, you know, like Joseph Lombardo and those guys. So when it came to a, to a bench, Chicago had a much deeper bench of shooters and stuff than New York could have come up with in my uh, opinion luminous grin was it really an anthony Martini show i haven't gone through all the street story videos yet guys yeah. if you haven't go down below in the description click on the link go over to anthony's channel check out look one of my favorite videos that he did that you did anthony i'm talking like he's not here <laughs> i'm not one of the favorite videos that, that you did uh was about the helicopter cop the helicopter mm -hmm. uh police officer I didn't know that story at all. You did another no. one about the L train crashing and falling off. That I didn't know about that. That it's awesome history. And I also, where are you getting all that footage from? I, I gotta ask. Where do you, where <laughs> uh, do you various places? I, you know, I'm not. I, I try to help everyone, so I'm going to give you my sources. Of course, YouTube. But there's there's a hundred other platforms that you can snatch footage from. And then people don't realize this, but eBay has a source of pictures that's uncomparable for certain things. So if I wanted to get old menus or pictures of play or old postcards that depict some of these places, eBay has them all day long. So. Wow. That's awesome. That's I, I've been resourceful as, you know, looking on different platforms for, for footage, but mm -hmm. the stuff that you come up with, I just, I could tell you, you put a lot of work into your, uh, into your uh, editing and, uh, and, and it's, you sound very passionate when you're telling the stories and, Dude, yeah, you, I, check, I try to make it interesting, but short. I try to keep them short and interesting. Um, Anthony, thank you so much for doing my intros. He did one intro, and I said, "Wow!" And then he did a second. Thank you so much, buddy. No, anytime, Red. I'll I'll make you a few more so you have a, a pool <laughs> to choose from. <laughs> thank you. Um, share capo. Uh, you said that that you noticed Frank over Anthony's right shoulder there. And you said that he was an ex coworker, used to work with him. And she said uh, he bodyguarded a couple events, and we both wrote and worked with Dennis Griffin. Also missed. Um, I, I, I'm trying to put who you are together because you said I see Frank a lot of old worker. He's missed. <clears throat> you didn't used to drive with him, did you? Because I know there was a girl that used to drive with Frank. So if if that's who you are, but. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, why was Caifano replaced by Spilatro? Is that, that's a good question for you, Red. Okay. 
Uh, well, Marshall went to prison, and <laughs> that kind of took care of that. And there was a vacuum in there for a short period of time where Johnny Roselli kind of was the overseer, and they decided to send Tony out in 71, I believe. Gotcha. Um, uh, Don Chichio de Porzalo. Uh, I had a question earlier here, and I wanted to ask it. Uh, it is about, uh, here we go. Anthony from Giuliano. I'm oh, sorry. Did Anthony know Giuliano from Piero's and Giannotti's? I know of those places. I don't know that person, though. Matter of fact, the only person I knew from Giannotti's was, uh, I want to say his last name was Ponte, but I'm not. don't hold me to it. We're talking... You know, I'm an old man. I'm sixty some years old, so <laughs> my memory's not what it once was. <laughs> You're not your sixty. That's not that old. That's not that old. Anthony, 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 Red and I were talking about that last night. I said, "How old is this uh, Anthony?" You know, like what era? Because I'm trying to get a, a feel, right? And, and I'm looking at your picture, and I said, well, "He's got to be in his upper forties, right?" Yeah. And, and Red goes, "No, no, guy. He's, my he's my he's IQ is in the upper forties." I said maybe he's in his fifties then, mid fifties. So that's was yeah. my guess. And, and Red said, "Yeah, it's probably about right." Sixties, yeah. You look good we'll go for sixties. <laughs> you look good for sixties, man. Let me tell you. That's, oh yeah, I keep the lights down low. You keep yeah, I keep the black lights on. And the, and the, yeah, never mind. I worked in a strip club too long. All right. Hey, what I look like, Rich Little? <laughs> um. um uh, the Dennis Griffin who worked for Chicago schools. No, different Dennis Griffin. We're talking about Denny Griffin. He was an author in the side comments, guys. Um, right. For those of you just tuning in, um, Anthony Demartini's with us. And Anthony thought he's going to bomb. We have over 220 viewers right now. Hit the like button, button guys. Smash it. Uh, this actually is doing quite, quite well, Anthony. Uh, oh, there's Red's book. That's Red's book right there. You can autograph right. copy. Made out to me, of course. Cool. There yeah. you go. <laughs> there you Thank go. You, Thank you, Anthony. Um, Jack Cerrone had a short stint as boss. Yes, Jack Cerrone was the boss for a little while. Several times. He, there's a problem. He, he come in and replaced for like two years or whatever, right after Milwaukee Phil died. So he was the MVP guy. guy. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I only know from I doing the research. Carlo used, to, Carlo used to stick him in there. You know, okay, you can you can go now. You can lay back. You can go now. You can lay back. Uh, how about Don Angelini from Giannotti's? Anthony, ring a bell? No, no. Okay, sorry, Don Chichio Di Porzalo. I'm, I'm trying sorry, for you. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of places where I didn't. I didn't really like. Like I said, my dad's family were from the neighborhood, so. I didn't go like they all, they founded that old neighborhood Italian American club. They call it ONIAC. I never went in there because, you know, I'm nobody. So they don't, you know, they're kind of selective of who, and even when you go like to Gene and Giorgetti's or those places that were frequented by made guys or whatever, you know, a mope like me isn't going to come in off the street and just sit down or, you know, they, they're, they, they have their own little thing. And, you know, and waiters are, are like that too. We have our own little club of, of customers and, We'll recommend another restaurant because we got a buddy over there, and I'm sure it's the same in Vegas. Uh, you know, it's kind of a small group of people, and if if I was one of those guys that was known in, in those places, then I, you know, I would have had a, a deeper relationship with some of these people. But yeah, I, I didn't know. I didn't. I, I I don't even think I went in Giannotti's. Um, Anthony. Do you have any favorite uh, jokes or story, story, jokes you want to share with the audience? Jokes? Well, I, I, on payday, I could show you my check. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Hey, my, fa my favorite, my favorite joke uh, is, is Rodney Dangerfield. I went to the proctologist yesterday, and he put his finger in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> My God, I, I said to my doctor, you know, because I just turned, well, the other day, I just turned 45. And the doctor told me when I went for my last checkup, he's like, time for the check, you know, <laughs> right? You guys know what I'm talking about. And I said, well, I said, please tell me you don't suffer from SFS. He said, what's SFS? I said, short finger syndrome. 
<laughs> then I told them, Doc, I said, I just want you to know, but you're my first. <laughs> Can you at least woo me before we do this? Hey, on my way out, can I take the flowers with me from the front office? <laughs> the first one I had, the guy had fingers like Wilt Chamberlain. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's the mobster's favorite game? Whack-a-mole. Oh, hey, there's a guy. There's a guy, if you can get him on the show, Aaron Fector, really nice guy. He's the one that invented Whack-A-Mole. He also invented the Chuck E. Cheese um, animatronics. Great guy. I'm friends with him on Facebook. I'll ask him for you. No kidding. He lives down in Florida. Smart guy. Smart as a whip. Wow. That's pretty, that's pretty wild. How many mobsters do you need to push a man off a cliff, Fred? None. He said he fell by himself. That's right. <laughs> Nine, nine, nine times. <laughs> Cindy Workman, use the box, Adam. Um, what box? What box? Adam is a Star Wars baby. Seventy-seven? No, you yeah. were born. You were born 77. after seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. Yeah, yeah. Star, Star Wars, Wars baby. Not that year, I was a Star Wars baby. You're right. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. <laughs> and I went to the theater in Old Orchard and rented the whole theater for the night to watch that movie. I brought friends with me. I saw it at the Esquire on Oak Street. Or on, yeah, on Oak Street. Wow. You guys are remember which movie theater you were sitting at. I was getting delivered. Well, you know, Star Wars was such a, a <laughs> novel thing that, that it was lined up for blocks to see that. You had to make reservations almost. I guess I it was quite it. the thing. It was quite the spectacle. I mean, the, the what yeah. they did in that movie was for the first time the way that uh, George Lucas filmed with the models and made the you know everybody yeah. freaked out about that. It was between that and Jaws, which was I think the same year or just prior, you you had to line up at the theater to see it, people because it was t- such a novel thing. What part of the North Side did you grow up? Trail Dusty's wanting to know. Uh, when I was really little, we lived at uh, Belmont and Lakeshore Drive. And then as I uh, got older, uh, because my dad was downtown, I lived on Oak, or on, uh, I want to keep saying Oak, Chestnut and uh, Lakeshore Drive. Was that the Belden Stratford? Uh, Belden Stratford's on uh, Belden and Lincoln Park West. No, I lived, uh, it's an Elmie's Vandro building at 860 Lakeshore. Okay. I know what Cindy's getting at, guys. Use the box, Adam. You know why Barbie can't get Leia pregnant? Because Ken comes in his own box. <laughs> we did that joke the other day, and that was a callback, I think, to that joke. Thanks, Cindy. Anthony, where did you see uh, the exorcist? What? Where did you exorcist. see the exorcist? I, I don't think I ever saw that movie. Although... I don't know if you remember this, Red, but I was an extra in the movie The Fury, which they filmed on Oak Street Beach. And I just happened to be hanging around down there. So I was walking around and walking around and walking around. <laughs> yes, that was with uh, Kirk Douglas, right? I think so, yeah. 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 And I was I next to Dr. Detroit by accident. I was, I was standing there waiting for the bus on North Avenue. And this was when you had the Walkmans and everything. I was probably listening to my Walkman. And uh, I seen a, a flatbed truck go by with a whole camera thing rig on it and a bunch of guys. And what the heck's going on? Later on in the movie, I see me stand there against a pole on North End waiting for the bus in the movie Dr. Detroit, which was like a B movie with Dan Aykroyd. Wow. Uh, Anthony, what do you miss most about Chicago? Uh, the way it was. The way it, the way was. it was. Yeah. My mother-in-law, I still have family there. My mother-in-law is still there, and, and my brother-in-laws are still there, and uh, two of our sons are still there. So we're we still go back. My mother-in-law sends an advent calendar every uh, Christmas with uh, half the windows boarded up. So, yeah. <laughs> Bars over them. <laughs> Security doors. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I know it's from her. <laughs> Chicago is like Chirac. That's what they call it now. It's, it's just pretty it's, rough. It's pretty yeah, rough. it's how it is. 
Anthony, uh, was it you that said Jackie Cerrone was on the set of The Thief? He was. He with, was. Uh, he, he was either friends with or had something going on with Tuesday Weld. Because every time I saw him, they were together. <clears throat> and I worked on that. I worked on that movie. I worked for a guy that did all of the restorations and and all of the set scenes and vignettes and stuff for the Chicago Film Commission. It was a big thing, man. Uh, they did a lot of movies in that little era. And so I worked on Thief with, with him. I worked on Flatliners, which was a Kevin Bacon movie, I think. Yeah. Um, and uh, the one, there was another one. with uh, Kevin Jim Belushi Bacon, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Red Heat. Red Heat. Right. Red Heat. Yeah. That had Jim Belushi awesome. in it. Jim Belushi. Uh, Jim Belushi was in it, yeah. I never saw Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I did see Jim Belushi. Of course, you'd see him walk around on Wells uh, Street down. I saw him all the time. <laughs> back in the day, yeah. So uh, so my uh, Italian tutor is uh, sending me messages. And uh, I told you I told you that my Italian tutor. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on here. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I did that on oh. purpose. Yeah. So I never oh. had "Happy Birthday" sung to me in Sicilian, which is awesome. But uh, uh, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna think I'm gonna get this right when I read it. But uh, you know, Frank Collada used to say a spicone, and a spicone <laughs> I mean, it means uh, somebody's like a big shot, you know, like a braggart. They try to impress people. But, uh, but he says here in this comment right there at the bottom of the screen that, Anthony, you need to change your nickname because you're far from a stronzo. Stronzo you, means ass, you know. Stronzo. Yeah, literally, Anthony's mugshot says stronzo, and that literally means turd <laughs> in Italian, okay? Yeah. But in slang, <laughs> it could be for a person acting like an idiot. Yeah. That's why I chose it. <laughs> stronzo, huh? A strong zone. And, and plus, it's hard to put Tootsie Pots and quotes in your middle of your name. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. You guys, you know, it's been, this has been fun. It's been a fun hour. Anthony, you've been a blast, dude. I'm telling you, Thank we're you. over 200 people watching today, which is great. Wow. Uh, hit the like button, guys, before you leave the show. Go down in the description, go over to Anthony's channel, hit the subscribe button. Go watch some of his videos. They're awesome. I promise you. you, you won't be disappointed. And all the cool little intros that we've been having lately, it's because of this guy down right here, okay? He's making these for us. For what? He's not even charging us. He's just like, I just want to make these for you, you know? <laughs> so I'm. Um, thank you. I do appreciate you. you. And thank it's you. so thank awesome you. to have another YouTuber on to sit and, you know, shoot the shit with for a little bit about Chicago <laughs> and the mob and Vegas. Uh, it's been fun, man. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Red. Thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody. You're welcome. And, uh, Are we going to do an after show? Yeah, uh, we're doing an after show. We'll set, we can set one up. Guys, give us five minutes. I'll set one up. Go over to Red's channel. It'll be on Red's channel, okay? Um, so uh, we'll see you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys over there. Thanks so much. And uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you guys. Great thank show, you. thank you guys very much. Uh, Don Chichio Di Portalo, thank you, buddy. All right, guys, have a great day. It's been fun, and we'll see you next Wednesday here on Mob Vlog.